Well, we're headed home from Vegas, uh, coming home the back way to avoid the traffic on I-15. <clears throat> Gonna go through Death Valley. We're here at Death Valley Junction. A lot of people don't even know this place exists or why it exists. But uh, Death Valley Junction was a place where in the 20 mule train days, <clears throat> most of the borax in the United States was mined in this area uh, from Death Valley and down the Yamagosa Amargosa River Valley, and the Amargosa River is uh, mostly an underground river and flows uh, through this area, north to south. And um, and they had established this as a, a waypoint for some of the uh, wagons that came through. The, the ones out of Death Valley generally went out of Death Valley straight to Mojave, but uh, there were some over around where Ash Meadows is now. There's a wildlife sanctuary over there now, but uh, this is where the road led south and then down this way, all the way down through uh, Baker and over in, into Daggett, there was, this is where most of the borax in the United States was mined. But anyway, the uh, Tonopah Tidewater Railroad uh, was gonna take advantage of all the uh, mining up here and they started their railroad at Ludlow, California on Old 66, which wasn't there then. But uh, the TNT was established, I believe, it's been a while since I read up on it, but I believe in 1909. And uh, the railroad, 1907 or 1909, the railroad, I think it was started in 1907 and completed in 1909. But uh, anyway, it came up the Amagosa River Valley to Death Valley Junction. And then uh, at Death Valley Junction, they uh, built a line that went over into Death Valley to a place called Ryan. Ryan still exists. You can get tours. They only do it a couple of times a year. I've tried for the last couple of years to get a tour there, but if you don't get there, if you don't get your reservations in early, it's too late, and it's been too late for the last couple of years. Anyway, so I'm at Death Valley Junction, and we'll look around a little bit. There's not a lot left here, but uh, we'll check out what is here. This is the only building left in Death Valley Junction that was part of the Tonopah Tidewater Railroad. Uh, this was uh, a small warehouse uh, where they brought things in and loaded them off the train, uh, whatever it needed, uh, whatever. But uh, there are some buildings over there that wasn't part of the railroad. That stuff's all fenced off but it was part of the uh, mining stuff that went on around here. Uh, uh, Pacific Coast Borax had their headquarters here and they had a lot of uh, property here that was used. And that out there, this is the direction the railroad ran. There's the warehouse and the railroad ran this way. We're looking south right now. Uh, towards uh, Dumont Dunes for those of you who go to Dumont towards Baker and uh, those tanks and towers out there that was part of where the uh, yard they actually had a switching yard here the Tonopah Tidewater they had engine houses they had a the TNT had headquarters here uh, this was their division point the railroad actually continued up to uh, Goldfield Nevada anyway move on over to some of the other buildings. I just noticed this, I walked right across it a minute ago. Still some railroad ties here from the old Tonopah and Tidewater going on out uh, that way. Probably a loading track or something. Anyway, it's right behind the old garage and restaurant there. We'll go around and get some shots of that from the front. All right, as you can see here, there's road bed right there across the street here. This is the road that goes to Pahrump. We just came that way. And uh, anyway, you can see that elevated road bed there. That was the end of the yard track. You can see it curves off to the left there and intersects. There's the road bed for the main line right there straight back that way to where the, we were where we just were at the old warehouse and 
this is where it heads. This is looking north. Uh, the intersection with Highway 95 is about, I think it's about 20 or 30 miles that way. I've never been that way. I've never been past the uh, This is the, uh, was once the Death Valley Junction garage, general store, and gas station. I don't know when it closed. Uh, the Tonobont Tidewater Railroad seized operation. Gosh, there again, I'll have to look at my source material when I get home, but uh, 1939. But anyway, that uh, cool old building. It's a shame that there isn't enough traffic to sustain it anymore. There's the road going south to Baker. This is uh, Highway 127 and that is going north to Highway 95 and uh, to Goldfield and Reno and places north. And this is right across the street from the garage. This is the Amagosa Cafe, which is part of the Amagosa Hotel Complex and the Amagosa Opera House down there. We'll go and drive in there and get some closer up stuff. But this is still in business. This whole facility was built originally as the Pacific Coast Borax. Uh, it was a headquarter company offices and uh, you can still eat here. You can still get a room here. They say that this place is haunted. I don't believe in that kind of stuff, but that's what they say. Anyway, get a cruise in there a little closer. And we've pulled up actually into the complex here. This is the Amargosa Hotel. There's a little restaurant in there but this is really a cool structure a really cool building and like I said you can still get rooms here they have air conditioners in them I can't I don't know I may come out here sometime and do some exploring me and Jennifer come out here and actually get a room and see if the ghosts wake us up at night and this is the lobby of the Amargosa Hotel they have graciously allowed me to shoot some footage in here because I'm not commercial. I'm not making any money off this. They generally don't allow people to do this, they told me, but they're very kind and allowed me to do this because I'm so cool. Oh, God. And then the little dining room in there. And I'm they're actually going to do in November a Death Valley Junction uh, History Weekend that they've told me about. And that's looking down the hallway where the motel rooms are. The hotel rooms, I'm sorry. And uh, everybody interested, they run from $92 to $102 a night. So if you ever want to come out here and check it out, you can do that. And uh, I will link the uh, email for the Amargosa Hotel. Looks like they get a little library and museum thing back there. Maybe come in and check that out here in a minute. But anyway, I will link their email to that for anybody who may want to be who may for anybody who may be interested in uh, coming here and staying or visiting or checking out the uh, history weekend uh, this November. Anyway, I'd like to thank these people very much for allowing me to shoot this. That's looking outside, out the doors of the lobby. And this is the Amargosa Opera House. It is part of the complex here. The former Pacific Coast Borax 
facility. This actually existed while it was the PCB headquarters and uh, the gal that operated this was God, it says Marta Beckett up there and I don't I, there again I'll have to go back to my resource material and see if that's her or if that's somebody from a more modern era that has murals and stuff this gal staged uh, ballets plays I evidently she was a famous dancer and choreographer in her day and this was actually, uh, from what I read, a pretty popular place. So anyway, that is the little small short tour of the former Pacific Coast Borax office facilities, now the Amargosa Hotel and Cafe. And again, I will link the email to this in the description. And this is uh, the road right here that goes up to Death Valley. And those are the old residences at Death Valley Junction. We're looking south towards those places. I'd like to get a tour, be able to scrounge around in there a little bit at some point. I don't have time on this trip, maybe some other time. They, were a little reluctant to let me shoot inside the uh, hotel lobby, so they may even be more reluctant to allow me to. Yeah, anyway, there's the sign that tells you that you turn left. Highway 95 is 24 miles. Las Vegas Maya 95 is 119 miles. And we are 83 miles from Baker. Anyway, off to Death Valley. Here we are in Death Valley. Uh, this is the uh, Furnace Creek Inn. And I read somewhere that they changed this to the Oasis in Death Valley or something like this. I know it'll always be Furnace Creek to me. But here we are, elevation, we're at sea level. Bad water is 17 miles that way. That's the lowest point in the Western Hemisphere, 282 feet below sea level. I've been out there, ain't much to see. It's just Alkali. There that is Telescope Peak. I talked about that uh, in my Trona tour about how bad water is right straight across from it. And uh, there's that. Telescope Peak. Still has snow on it. It's uh, May 6th. And that is looking down into Death Valley towards, uh, you can see the Furnace Creek down there where the trees are. We're going to stop there and see if the museum is open. I've never been to it, even though I've been to Furnace Creek a few times. And we'll check that out. And we're taking a stop here at the ranch at Death Valley. This uh, last time I was here, we still call it Furnace Creek Ranch. It's all been redone. Uh, they're a really nice job, it looks like. But uh, I understand the restaurant is now called the Oasis at uh, Death Valley. This was originally called the Greenland Ranch. It's changed to Furnace Creek Ranch in the 20s, I believe. Now it's just the ranch. And that is looking east. Across the valley the mountains. There's the uh, Mountains Creek Inn. We were earlier at sea level. Back out the way we came. Death Valley Junction. Down this road, our next stop is going to be the Harmony Borax Works and then Stove Pipe Wells, and then we will leave Death Valley. I hope the audio is not too bad, it's getting really windy. This is the uh, post office at Death Valley uh, 92328. You can see that it says uh, 328 Greenland. Uh, this was originally called, but uh, this has all been completely redone. That building right there is new. 
they've redone the entire uh, restaurant and gift shop part of the uh, it's called the Oasis at Death Valley now the Greenland Ranch it was renamed Furnace Creek oh look at that golf course uh, post office at Death Valley uh, 92328 you see that it says uh, 328 Greenland uh, this was originally called the Greenland Ranch it was renamed Furnace Creek. Oh, look at that golf course. But uh, this has all been completely redone. That building right there is new. They've redone the entire uh, restaurant and gift shop part of the, uh, it's called the Oasis at Death Valley now. And this, here were all these trees and everything. Oh, this used to be a parking lot. Uh, all these buildings have been redone. The post office is the same. It doesn't look any different. But anyway, the inside where the restaurant is has been completely redone and it's, they've done a really nice job, really modernized it. Uh, we're not gonna eat there because we're not hungry. But anyway, that is a little tour of Furnace Creek at Death Valley, elevation minus 190 feet. And that is looking down the road where you can actually rent bungalows. And of course, when I get ready to shoot, there's going to be a traffic jam. Two cars. Traffic jam for Death Valley. But anyway, those are the bungalows. There are quite a few more back that way. Well, this is the uh, museum at Furnace Creek, the Borax Museum, Furnace Creek Museum, whatever you want to call it. This so site's got some pretty cool stuff. And Jennifer up there walking ahead of me checking it out. for the railroad and it looks like it actually had an engine in it this was not a this was not a hand cart this was had gear drive down there gas tank so this was a motor driven rail car Long cruise around, sit on either side of it. Mining processing equipment there. And again, this uh, there were gold interests around here, but most of the mining in this area in Death Valley, up toward up at Ryan, which is up above uh, Badwater on the other side of the hills from Badwater. As I talked about earlier, I'd love to get up there and do a tour. But anyway, uh, until the discovery of the huge borax deposit at uh, Boron in uh, the mid-50s, the uh, mining for borax came from, most of it came from Death Valley and the surrounding area. This was all pretty much abandoned once the uh, borax plant was open in Boron. This was a crusher for gold. This wasn't used here in Death Valley. This was actually used in Nevada, according to the history of it. And uh, they would put the gold ore down in this basin, use water to turn that wheel there, which turned the gears and drug these rocks over the ore and crushed it. Uh, I don't know when this thing was being used, but obviously stamp mills were a much more efficient way to crush gold ore. And this is a uh, narrow gauge Baldwin 280 with tender. Baldwin was the company that built the engine. They were in Philadelphia. 
plate is still on there. It's a nice example of a steam locomotive. Looks like about a three foot gauge. It's in pretty good shape for having been sitting here all these years. Oh shit, sorry, I almost tripped. I did trip, I just didn't fall. Now this, I actually read about these in the uh, book I have on the Jawbone and in the Tidewater and Tonopah. The, uh, this is Old Dinah. This is a steam engine that they experimented with to replace the 20 mule teams. As you can see, they have the big borax wagons in tow. It didn't work out. Well, it was a very powerful engine. It was perfectly capable of pulling the weight and it would have been more efficient than the mules, except that uh, it didn't do well in sand and it didn't do well in hills. It tended to do wheelies on hills and they couldn't steer it. But uh, I'll bet that was a badass sounding and looking machine when it was running. Old Dinah. I'm not even sure what that was or is. Numbered 29, I'll have to look it up. Oh, here it is, it says right here. Logging wheels. Charleston Mountains, east of Death Valley. Charleston is the mountain that you can still see snow on. It is west of Las Vegas, about 20 miles between Vegas and Pahrump. Here's another, this is a 20 mule team wagon train. Got its uh, water wagon behind it. Here's an old horse-drawn road grader. I'm gonna have to get the little thing that tells us what all this stuff is. By numbers. Wow. It's got to be some sort of road building equipment. It's got steel wheels with concrete in the middle for weight. The rest of this stuff's all just wagons. I really wanted to see the locomotive. I'd seen pictures of it and read about it. Now I've uh, actually walked up to it. I've been to Furnace Creek before. I've been here, but I've never come back to the museum. Really nice. They come out here and stay one day and Go play around to golf. I hear they have a really nice 18 hole course here. There's Jennifer, looking pretty. Uh, you can rent bungalows here at Furnace Creek. Probably cheaper than staying up at Furnace Creek Inn. This has been renamed the Oasis at Death Valley. But the area is still on Furnace Creek. Anyway, a little short tour of the museum. This was the first major borax processing plant in Death Valley. It operated from 1883 to 1889, I think. There again, I've got to read up on it. And oddly enough, this wasn't the first processing plant for borax in Death Valley, but it was the first major and productive one. I know nothing of the borax works, how it all worked. Put them there. And a 20 mule team wagon. And over there, some old ruins that were part of the Harmony Works at one time.
And this is a picture of what it looked like when it was in operation. This says about 1900. 12 years after, oh, this is 12 years after the operation ceased. San Francisco businessman William, William T. Coleman built this plant in 1882 to refine cotton ball borax. They hauled it 165 miles up to the 20 Mule Team Canyon, which is about 20 miles south of here, and uh, that cut off towards the southwest and went to Mojave. And eventually, when the railroad was built in Mojave and the Death Valley Railroad was built up here, Obviously, they didn't need the uh, 20 mule team wagons anymore. But anyway, again, looking across Death Valley to the east, and that is looking north up Death Valley towards Stovepipe Wells. I don't think we're going to stop at Stovepipe Wells. There's nothing there but a store and a hotel. They used stovepipes, they dug wells and used stovepipes to bring water to the surface. Anyway, we'll head that way. That's about 25 miles distant. I think our next stop's gonna be at Panama Springs. There's the old sled. Oh, well, we got Jennifer doing the shooting for me, so I don't get us killed. And we're not gonna stop here. It's windy, it's hot, it's uh, not a this is 95 back at Harmony Borax Works. It's 100 degrees here. Getting much hotter. Enough. Looking out across the dunes, it's really windy. You can see the sand kicking up everywhere. Uh, going through now what they call the Devil's Cornfield. I don't know if I can call it that. I guess pucker bushes. I guess it's pucker bushes. It must be the corn in hell. I don't know. But anyway, I don't think those are pucker bushes. I'm not sure what they are. Maybe it's devil's corn. Who knows? But anyway, those are the Death Valley dunes there. It's not a very big area of dunes, but it's uh, pretty cool. You can see all the dust kicking up. I imagine by tomorrow morning, a lot of it will look different. are called the Mesquite Dunes, not the Death Valley Dunes. Uh, you see that was pretty cool. <laughs> we do come through Death Valley every once in a while. I think it's convenient. Maybe if I remember, I'll pull up this video next time we come through and see if, how different the dunes look with all the wind. Uh, you can see out there ahead of us significant dust storm out there which is why we're not going to pull over and get out and see any reason to subject myself to that there's a lot of people here at the dunes you can see in the parking lot right there good for them anyway on to the next place down off the top of, I can't remember the name of this peak, <laughs> we've got an idiot driver in front of us going 30 miles an hour, not the guy in the pickup, the guy in front of him, but uh, that's looking off down into the Panamint Valley, which is uh, the next valley west of Death Valley, we're going to stop there and eat, yeah. so we're going to stop down at Panamint Spr Springs and grab us something to eat, I always thought this was a really cool uh, view coming down this hill. It's very steep, pretty curvy. And some people panic like the guy up here in front of this pickup. Going about 40 miles an hour. But anyway, I just thought I'd get a shot of this looking off down into the Panamint Valley. The last couple of times we've come this way, We've encountered these kind of drivers. It is so annoying. <coughs> there's no, no 
no passing all the way down this hill. We can't get around until we get down to the very bottom where it straightens out. This is a cool place to see jets, military jets flying low. Probably won't be in this wind like this, but every once in a while you see them blasting down through Panamint Valley. And here we are, Panamint Springs restaurant. Gonna get us a, I'm gonna get a burger. Jennifer's gonna get herself a patty melt. She's really good, it's really windy here. And that is looking back towards Death Valley, the way we just came. That big peak, tall peak up there. This is the west side of Telescope Peak. Down into the Panamint Valley. Can't right there. Panamint Springs Resort. We actually stop here often. There's my love. Anyway, gonna grab us a bite, hit the road, maybe stop in Toronto and see Dave and Michelle. Well, we made it home. The road trip was a success. The racing was good in Vegas. It was a nice visit with Beth. Wish we could have got to visit Mike a little more, but he had to work. Uh, the trip home was good. Got a lot of video shot and uh, got to eat at Panamint Springs and stopped in Trona, visited Dave and Michelle. And we left Vegas at... 2.30, a little after 2.30, we had to stop and get gas. And it is now 10 minutes till 11. Uh, we got home about 10 minutes ago. But uh, it was a calm drive home. Uh, always take the back road coming coming in through Perump. We don't take 15 on Sundays. And uh, it was a good trip. Thanks for coming along. See you all later.